South Dakota lawmakers and Governor Kristi Noem have approved a large sum of money to go toward expanding the state prison system. That includes $60 million for a new women's prison in Rapid City and $271 million to begin the process of replacing the state penitentiary that houses men in Sioux Falls. But as Lauren Solik explains in tonight's Coverland News investigation, a lack of room in the facilities isn't the only issue inmates are facing. Rebecca Shaw was recently released from the women's prison in Pierre after serving nine months for drug possession. She says the biggest issue she saw while in custody was overcrowding, which sometimes led to violence. I was housed in the gym while I was in intake with 30 other women. Our bunks were in there, moved out to um, the inside unit when we got classified and spent four months in there. I witnessed, you know, severe gang violence, overcrowding, girls getting arguments because you don't have enough room for nothing. You get a little tiny locker to put your stuff in and that's all, a lot of thieving going on. It's just chaos. Was there a lot of effort to fix that from correctional officers or? No, 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 no. I mean, the correctional officers, there's so minimum staff there that it's hard for them to even control them. The women, the inmates, they get yelled at, they get harassed by the inmates. They could easily be overpowered. And it's it's kind of scary for, for a staff member, you know. Shaw says the problems inside these prison walls went beyond overcrowding. I never once seen a heart doctor. Um, I have a pacemaker defibrillator in my chest. Um, I had some problems with it, went to the hospital. Staff didn't know what to do. The nursing didn't know what to do. Um, so they just left me untreated. I never seen a cardiologist or anything. Filed grievances. I filed many, many grievances. My grievances never got answered. There's also a high population here at the state penitentiary, but for Christina Kopecki, a mom of a current inmate, her biggest concern is the food being served to her son. One week he told me that they had scalloped potatoes and ham three times in one week, and on the last night that they had it, it smelled so awful that nobody nobody could eat it. In a letter to the Department of Corrections, Kopecki and other parents of inmates questioned the quality of food in the prison. The letter also mentions a cut to the maximum amount of money inmates can spend each week at the commissary or prison canteen. Inmates used to be able to spend $40 a week. Now it's 25 And they have to supplement with that commissary. So, so diminishing the commissary amounts um, or and even the money in their accounts and even the care packs that we're, that we're able to send um, can really affect them if they're, if they're hungry. Kopecki received a letter back from Kelly Wasco, the secretary of the Department of Corrections. In it, Wasco tells Kopecki that commissary was lessened to assist with space limitations and sanitation efforts. This just happened this year. He's been in there three years and all of a sudden now space is an issue. I, I, <laughs> I just don't know if I believe it. As for quality of food, Kopecki was told her concerns were brought forward to facility administration. I know I told the other parents that it was it was pretty much what I expected, right? A lot of reiteration of policy, um, some excuses, and some of the raising of concerns or alerting other uh, entities. Terry Liggins is an advocate for inmates trying to get back on their feet after a prison sentence. He says another issue is the lack of programming for inmates in the South Dakota prison system. Part of the challenge is there's not enough true rehabilitation happening at the Department of Correction and Rehabilitation. It's in the mission that individuals, when they go in there, they should be experiencing rehabilitation services. And there are some services there, there is some help happening, but not near enough that could be happening or should be happening to ensure that when people get out of prison, they're actually better in their minds, they're better with their emotional intelligence and better in their psychological Mindset. The Department of Corrections reports that 95% of all South Dakota inmates will eventually be released. And some, like my son, may be in there till 40, till he's 40. Um, he wasn't handling 22 real well out in the real world. What's he going to do at 40 as far as budgeting, grocery shopping, you know, 
look how technology is changing. You know, they don't have access to really any of that in there. Kopecki's son, Jameson Mitchell, is in prison on manslaughter charges. Rebecca Shaw was incarcerated for drugs, but they say behind each inmate's crime is a person. They get out of prison and their parents, their moms and dads, their brothers and sisters, their uncles, their community members, their, their future employees. And again, they maybe had a really bad night and now are paying for it for the rest of their lives. And it just really makes you think not to be so judgmental. Everybody deserves a chance. Just because we go to prison doesn't mean we're a bad, evil person. Um, it means that we broke the law and we have to face our consequences for that, regardless if it's for drugs or violence or whatever. We all deserve the same opportunities. With Kelloland Investigates, I'm Lauren Solick. Kelloland News requested an interview with the Department of Corrections and received an email statement. We posted that with the story on Kelloland.com as well as an extended version of this investigation.